Here's a fun little calculus exercise, and I'm going to show you how to think about it intuitively and how to rigorously write down a solution that will get you 100% if you are presenting this in a homework or an exam. I'm a professional mathematician, and let's master this limit. So here we have the limit as x goes to 3 of f of x minus 7 over x minus 3 is equal to 8. We're given that. Okay, we're given that info. We want to find the limit as x goes to 3 of f of x if it's possible to do. So how are we going to approach it? Now first I'm going to show you the intuition which isn't a rigorous mathematical argument. Okay? Then I'm going to make it rigorous using limit laws practice. So here we have limit x goes to 3 of this ratio is equal to 8. Let's think about what f of x could approach as x approaches 3. So first of all, as x approaches 3, if f of x approached 9, for example, let's just think about that. If f of x approached 9, what would happen to the limit? Well, if f of x approached 9 as x approached 3, the numerator would approach 2, 9 minus 7, and the denominator would approach 0. But that would be a limit that looks something like 2 over 0, which is undefined. It's actually, it could be either plus infinity or negative infinity. It's certainly not going to be 8. So that already gives you some insight into what f of x could possibly approach. Because in fact, if f of x approached anything other, if limit x approaches 3 of f of x was not equal to 7, right? If it was not equal to 7, so the numerator is not approaching 0, we're going to get something non-zero over something that's approaching 0. And that limit is always going to be either plus infinity or minus infinity. So that's going to be undefined, OK? Um, and so it couldn't certainly be a finite value. So that's the intuition, that somehow for a limit, if the denominator is going to 0, for the ratio to approach 8, the numerator also has to be going to 0. But that's not rigorous. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how to do this as a mathematician would. And it's going to be super simple and beautiful. It's going to encapsulate our intuition very nicely. And we're going to use limit laws for this. If you're loving my content, please don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel because I have math across all topics and levels. and I want to guide you on your math journey. I'm here for you. So let's get into now the rigorous argument. So we're going to think about how to find this in two steps. Okay, and I'm going to show you the steps. The first step is we're going to find out limit x approaches 3. We're going to find that limit out of x approaches 3 of f of x minus 7. Okay, just this limit. How are we going to do that? Well, we're going to understand that we know this limit, and if we multiply with another limit we know, we'll get another limit we know. Okay, so, and what we're going to do is we're going to multiply this, we're going to take this as limit x goes to 3 of f of x minus 7 divided by x minus 3, right, times limit x goes to 3 of x minus 3. Now, if we see that if we multiply the two limits, we'll get the limit of the product of the two expressions. That is by limit laws because both of these limits exist. That's very important. If both limits exist, then the limit of the product is the product of the limits. So here we get this, this expression, and it doesn't matter what this was. It could have been 8. That was already sort of clear from my intuitive, intuitive explanation. But it's 8. It doesn't matter. 8 times 0. Anything times 0 is 0. So as long as this was a well-defined number, we could conclude that this limit is going to equal to 0. And now what we can do is this is the product law for limits. And now we're going to use the sum law for limits that says limit x goes to 3 of f of x is equal to limit x goes to 3 of f of x minus 7. Okay, of f of x minus 7 plus limit x goes to 3 of 7. Okay, um, 7 is a constant, constant function. And you see here that this is again by the sum law for limits because both these limits exist. This limit exists by what we just explained. Okay, that was by the product law of limits. This limit is going to equal to 0. And limit x goes to 3 of 7, just 7. So we're just going to get 0 plus 7, which is equal to 7. So this is going to equal to 7. And that rigorously proves what we intuitively found. And that shows you how to write a rigorous math reasoning. Okay, so this problem is quite tricky. And I try to make it very easy for you. It stumps a lot of people. Uh, I taught this multiple times at Princeton University. And this was one of the more challenging problems when students encountered limits. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. And if you're really enjoying my content, please consider supporting my channel on Patreon. Thanks so much to Alex, Nathan, and Trang for their ongoing support. Links down in the description below. Makes a huge difference and allows me to continue building my channel and delivering infinite free accessible math education to people all around the world. If you want to know more about limits, here's a challenge for you. 
It's one of the more challenging limits. So check out that video and see if you can solve it. It's quite subtle. The answer is not what you think. And another fun video you love, it's a bit off the grain. My channel has content across all levels. And in this video, you're going to see how to find the sum one plus half plus one sixth plus one over 20 plus one over 30, etc. A cool trick that a fifth grader can come up with to find that sum in 15 seconds.